to take my photo all by myself. <laughs> Dude, oh, that's my way better than <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Mitchell and I'm here with Steven and Tommy and today we are doing another photo battle. It's been a little while since we've done our last one. This is actually the first one of the new year, 2021. And for this photo battle, we're gonna be doing the Polaroid photo battle. So these are those little Instax mini little point and shoot Polaroid things that you've probably seen all over the place. It should be interesting because you can't edit your photos after you take them and we're only giving ourselves 10 shots, so you kind of have to make every single one count. The way that these photo battles work is we each have two hours to go out and get the best photos we possibly can. You can use your time however you would like. You can go sit on the couch and do nothing, or you can actually hit the pavement and get shooting. After the two hours, we come back and then we reveal our photos. We also have you guys vote, and we see who took the best photo with their Polaroid camera. Here's the film. Thank you. Again, awesome. everyone gets 10 shots, so use them wisely. Photos. Okay. It is currently 5.30, we have to be back here by 7.30, and it starts in three, two, one, let's go. And we're off. I am out of shape, it's been a minute. <laughs> it's been so long since we've done this. I actually have a really good idea for this photo battle. I have no idea if it's gonna work, but for my first shot, I'm gonna try and get it in my bedroom. <laughs> what I wanna do is take a series of photos. We are technically only allowed to have our best two, but I think I'm gonna bend the rules here and do my best three. And I think it'd be kind of funny to do something where it looks like, say, I'm punching myself. This was kind of a TikTok trend a little while ago where what you do is you take one photo of someone with their arms stretched out and it cuts off right kind of where the arm is and you get just this. And then you get another photo of just the arm section. And then you have another photo where the arm is coming in and it looks like it's making contact with someone. If you stitch them all together and hold them all next to each other, it looks like I'm coming in punching myself with a really long arm. Might be pretty cool, even though I am kind of stretching the rules a little bit. I've made it to the location where I'm planning to take my photos. This is quite possibly my favorite location to take photos for photo battles. I have about two or three pretty decent ideas for photos with the Polaroid cameras. But first things first, I gotta put some film into my camera. I've loaded the film into my camera and now I just have to set up my scene and start shooting. Like we said before, there's only 10 shots in here so I gotta make sure every single shot counts. So this is my room. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of photos on the walls and they're gonna play a big part in getting the photo I'm trying to get here. So my idea for the Polaroid photo battle isn't just gonna be to take a couple boring, normal Polaroids. No, no, no. I thought we had to do something out of the box and after doing some research online, I found out you can actually take double exposures with this particular Polaroid camera. And for those of you who don't know what a double exposure is, it's when you have two different photographs overlaid on the same piece of film or same Polaroid frame. You still might be a little confused, but after I get shooting, I think you'll get it. Okay, so a bit of an issue with using these Polaroid cameras is the fact that they don't have a tripod mount in the bottom. So if you're going to use a tripod to take a photo of yourself, you have to kind of I'm assuming tape it on to your tripod, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And also, they don't have self-timers. So, I have a little solution here, which you may have seen before if you've seen our other photo battles, but I'm using this little follow focus remote kind of triggering system, and I'm going to tape this onto the Polaroid camera and use this to activate the shutter. Steven used this back in our disposable camera photo battle. But this is the setup. It's kind of crazy, but let's try it out. It's definitely gonna be a lot of trial and error, which is something I can't necessarily afford. So the idea for my shot is I'm gonna be using a tent. The plan is to set up the tent there on that peak there, overlooking the view of Kelowna, and then I'm gonna have my legs sticking out and then take a photo with the Polaroid camera. Ah. There we go. 
As you can see here, we've got the tent pitched and the doorway to the tent is looking straight out over that nice view. So apparently the way this works is instead of taking the photo normally and the photo would come out of the top, you tilt the film cartridge back so it actually stops the photo from printing out and that means you can seal it up and then take a second exposure over top of your previous image, thereby overlaying them all inside of camera. So I'm gonna try this with these kind of Polaroid looking photos on my wall and then a silhouette of myself outside so that in my dark silhouette, you see these nice photos. Okay. I, I think it worked. So basically right now we have one photo that's already been taken on one of these Polaroids. And now I'm gonna take another photo over top of that. Three, two, one. Perfect, look at that. I also need to set up the, uh, the wireless trigger system. So I have this wireless follow focus here and I'm going to jerry rig onto the Polaroid camera right there to take my photo all by myself. It's a little bit janky, but what I did was took this remote follow focus, which is controlled by this wheel over here. And if I turn this wheel, see how that's turning? This stick would then go down and then press the button right there. Hopefully I have a remote activated Polaroid camera. The plan for this shot is to kind of use this doorway as a frame and then have my legs here as if this is like what you see when you first wake up in the morning and you're camping and you have this crazy nice view right out in front of you. Oh yeah, this looks pretty good. Here we are, starting to show up there. Nice. I'm gonna take another of the exact same photograph just to make sure I got it and try maybe a few different settings and then we're gonna try a new composition. Okay, so the photo is mostly finished developing. It's not the best. I kind of totally misjudged the angles, but the effect worked super well. So if you can see right there, both photos are overlaid on top of each other. So I'm gonna try the whole thing again and hopefully on the second attempt, we'll get it. Hold it, hold it, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna try a different location here at the side of my house. The last one had too many trees, I think, and it was throwing it off. I'm such an idiot. The first photo of a new roll is like a dud. So I'm gonna have to do that whole thing over again. I will be right back. Okay, so setting up that little remote control trigger thing took me a little bit longer than I was expecting. It is currently 6.16, so I've already used up about 45 minutes setting all this up, and uh, I finally have to get shooting. I'm finally gonna take my first photo. Nothing happened. Okay, let's try that one more time. Slowly it's coming in. Look at that, that might actually work. First try. I'm honestly a little bit surprised. I think that is a perfect start. So next up I need kind of a, just a photo of like a section of my arm. Okay, so these are actually turning out kind of good. If I line those up, it looks like I've got an extra long arm. I've taken a few more photos and now I'm just kind of waiting for them to develop. I kind of realized I have quite a bit more time than I realized. I'm doing pretty good. So I'm just gonna wait for these things to develop so I can see what they look like and see if I need to reshoot them or not. And now we wait. Okay, I just redid the photo inside with an actual Polaroid photo inside this time. And I'm gonna try and get the portrait to go over top now. Three, two, one. Okay, hopefully this is the one. Okay, it's been like five minutes. I haven't checked to see what the photo looks like. And, okay. The effect worked perfectly. My pose is like a little weird while I'm like, but for my second photo entry, I'm gonna pack everything up and head into the woods and try and do some similar effects in there. The final photo that I need is the last one of like come in and then punch myself or something and I uh, but the trick is I would then have to 
frame it so it cuts off right there, which can be a tricky thing to do when I can't see through the viewfinder. Okay, this might work. <laughs> I'm sitting here punching myself in the face. Okay, there we go. <laughs> this is, it's just getting developed now. This looks so funny. <laughs> this is way better than I thought it would be. I've been waiting a little bit for these photos to develop and uh, I'm gonna be completely honest. This is challenging. Getting the exposure right on these photos is really hard. Now, I've taken quite a few photos. I only have three photos left. I think the next thing I'm gonna do is my third and final idea, which is a double exposure. So I'm gonna try that. The idea I have for my double exposure photo is I want to try to get like a side profile of my head first and have that in a silhouette and then try to take maybe a landscape shot. That should kind of overlay it and I think it should be pretty cool. Well, I just arrived at the woods and I'm parked here and guess who's parked right there? Steven. So Steven is obviously somewhere in these woods. We might run into him, we might not, but uh, that is funny. I wonder if we're gonna have any similar ideas. A double exposure. Double exposures. Wow, the light right here is perfect. So I think I'm gonna try and do one of the double exposures here with some of the nice glowing trees and I think another silhouette of me, maybe doing a different pose, but just to stick with the same theme. I'm looking for some other things to shoot and I see I have this bike right down there, this nice old vintage bike. So I was thinking what I do is haul that up here, throw it in the middle of the road, get some like vintage old bicycle photos. So I have a, a bit of an issue here. I forgot that there was tape on top where the photo pops out and now the photo is stuck in there halfway so I have to figure out how to get it out. <laughs> well, there's a wasted photo for you. Half, half a photo. So first things first, I need to get the side profile shot of my head. Just gotta cover up the uh, flash here. This is gonna be quite a, quite a tricky maneuver here. Three, two, one. Here we go. Excellent. Nothing popped out, but it took the photo, so I think we're good. And I was thinking of taking a, a shot straight out there of that view, and that'll be my second exposure to layer over top of the one I just took. Okay. Okay, I didn't film it, but I got a quick shot of the trees with the golden light because it was fading so quickly. But now I'm gonna try and get a portrait of myself. Let's give it a shot. Three, two, one. Perfect. It looks pretty solid. My framing is a little bit off, obviously, because I'm taking selfies blind. Uh, so I'm just gonna try a couple more things, probably use up the rest of the film that I have and see what I can come up with. Perfect. I have now, I think I have two or three more photos left, and then that's it. It is currently 7.01, so I have about half an hour, which is tons of time, actually. Okay, next one down. This is the view I'm gonna take for my final photograph. This is number 10 out of 10, here we go. All right, I'm just getting back to the car and look who pulled up behind me. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> me and Steven are inseparable on this battle, apparently. How'd your shoot go? It looks like you have some, some I, stuff no, there. Look at that. Um, it went well, it went well. We're like right on time here. No, we're like really early, actually. We got like 20 minutes, we're chilling. Well, we'll definitely make it on time. We're not sure about Mitch, but uh, we'll have to see. And that is a wrap. That's my last photo. It is currently 7.11, so I have about 15 minutes to make it back to the starting point. Also have to deconstruct my remote trigger here. You've been great, Mr. Remote Trigger. Here we go, got the camera. 
Okay, so I really kind of took my time with putting everything away. So I have about three minutes to make it back, so I really need to hurry. And here comes Mitchell. 724, Mitchell finally oh, arrives and his car's away. rolling away. <laughs> Maybe you put that thing in park. Well, how was that? Um, honestly, much better than I expected. I have some really solid photos. Well, with that being said, I we have all, taken all of our photos, so I think the next thing to do is just reveal what we got. They're already edited, so. Yeah, we don't have to edit the photos, they're <laughs> yeah. already done. And we're back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so it has probably been about half an hour since you guys last saw us, and uh, I think it's time to reveal our photos. There's no editing, which is really nice. Yeah, no kidding. You can see <laughs> reveal here. Yeah, I got them all right here. We're only showing our best two. Okay. And I guess I will go first. Okay. Okay. So this here, oh, I want to preface this by saying, oh, you're always, <laughs> always excuses from you. It, exposure is very hard. Yes. It's very challenging. So I did my best, but this is the first one. Kind of like a, oh, that's cool. Yeah, oh, there tried we to go, go for the camping that's vibe. Really oh, nice. you ripped out a tent for this. Exactly. Lo it looks so good on film. I was hoping you could see farther down into like the valley so you could see the city below, but no, sir. that just started, <laughs> that, yeah, that just got overexposed. Dynamic range is not a strong suit for those little cameras. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And this one is creative and okay. it's pretty cool. And this one right here, it's a double exposure. Whoa! Wow, how did you manage that's that? That's sick. It, I saw this little technique online about how you take a photo and quickly kind of like pull the film out and then quickly put it back in and it'll, ah. not, it, it won't pop up and oh. then you can do another exposure on top. Interesting. So it didn't really turn out that great because it's a little overexposed, but I'm still pretty happy with how it that turned out. That is sick. That's cool, that's yeah. cool. I can go next. Okay, you go next. Well, I feel like me and Steven are always doing this. I did the exact same oh, thing with the no, double exposure. Oh no, really? Yeah, I was like, I got this right up my The sleeve. double exposure? Yeah, yeah, so this is my first one. I did Oh, that's my... way better than mine. <laughs> Which is okay. I didn't oh, like my positioning. Good. I didn't like my hand really, but I was like, whatever. Oh, that's good. Mine, that's, that's pretty good. Mine looked terrible compared to that. Yeah. And then my other one, kind of cool. Another double exposure. Oh, that's pretty, oh, that's, that's nice. That's, that's nice. nice. That's I can't nice. believe me and Steven did the same thing. Oh my God. God. That's so funny. Because I was looking at different techniques. It's like, oh, you can draw on them. You can do this stuff. And then I was like, oh, no one's going to do this. Yeah. I, saw, I thought same thing too. I was like, oh, I got this in the bag. So I definitely didn't go and do the same thing you guys did. Good. Yeah, I went completely <laughs> different direction. One of mine is a bit of a, it's bending the rules a little bit, but not really. I have a single photo that I've put oh, together I into that. three photos. So let me just adjust it here. I've taped them all together. <laughs> oh man. So this is uh, my first photo. Oh, oh nice. Oh wow, that's actually pretty good. How was your... <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit weird, but... Cause you had to do that. Yeah. That's so... Cool. Yeah, I, I was thinking we're in the physical world here. I can use nice. these and do nice. different things like that. This is my other banger that I got. Oh, Whoa. wow. That's... That you use my technique. I did what technique with the whole with the yes the oh, trigger. Yeah, I, so I I because they don't have self timers. I made a remote trigger on it, just like I did in the disposable camera photo battle. Yeah, wow. So, uh, partial props to you, but <laughs> mainly to me. Now it is up to you guys to vote. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these photos, throw them on Instagram at TMS Productions underscore right up there, and you guys can go and vote and tell us which one is your favorite. And we're gonna reconvene in about 24 hours to uh, see what the results are. Real quick, before we get into the votes for this photo battle, I gotta tell you about the sponsor for this week's video, us. TMS Productions is the sponsor for this week's video with our LUTs and presets, which are down in the description below. We are offering a LUT pack, which is actually our first LUT pack ever. And there are five LUTs. One of them is the one we're using right now. And this is kind of our go-to LUT that we use for pretty much all of our YouTube videos, as well as four other LUTs that are used for different shooting scenarios. Also, there are presets available, like our Instagram callout preset, where it has our our name and that's totally customizable. You can put your own name in there as well as our name tag presets, which are also fully customizable. You can put your name in there and uh, use those for your very own videos. So if you wanna get your hands on some of those, there's going to be a link in the description down below or you can go to tmsmedia.ca slash shop and help support the channel. Anyways, back to the photo battle. Okay, this is it. The results are in. Okay, I'm excited. So it was much closer than I thought they were gonna be. Really? Yeah, so out really? of the total of 2,762 votes. 2,000? What? 2,700 wow. votes. Oh my. Coming in last okay. is myself. 
Okay, yeah. Wow. What am well I voting right. <laughs> Out of that 2,700 votes, one of them got 182 votes. <laughs> oh no. So thank you all 182 of you. <laughs> and the second one got 246. So it was pretty Okay, abysmal. not bad. That's like, yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. And the winner is... Mm -hmm. Mitchell. Yay! Wow. <laughs> One of his Knew photos has 718 votes. Wow. And the other has 685. Whoa. I'm gonna guess it's this one that has 700. Yeah. Is Mitchell holding the that's... bike? Then your second place photo was 685, which is the long one. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, wow, exactly. well done, Mitch. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Thank you. And Tommy was very well in the middle at 535 votes for his first photo and 396 for his second. Dope, I will take so it. So it's a pretty even spread all the way around. No one absolutely destroyed. Anyways, there you have it. That is kind of the results for our Polaroid photo battle. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're new here, make sure you go follow us on Instagram at Productions underscore. Also go down, like, comment, subscribe. It really helps us out. And I think that's it from us for this week. And we'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Yeah. Okay. Is that recording? Uh, no. Rookie move. <laughs> Good call. <laughs>